welcome to the Archbishop House. We have another one of our three favourite things uh, today on this beautiful sunny day from Preston. Uh, the Archbishop House, the home of the British Institute of Professional Photography. Uh, today we're very honoured indeed. We've got an amazing photographer, uh, Alistair Campbell, who's with us. And he's a, a fantastic photographer, award-winning photography. He also shoots video. And uh, as we move forward with the, with the Institute, we, we want to start doing more and more uh, with, with this medium of, of video. So Stuart's going to talk to us a little bit about that. So, hello. How are you, Alistair? All right? Hello. I'm good, actually. Yeah, you're looking yeah. well. Yeah, funnily enough, plenty more um, free time somehow to, I don't know, exercise and keep fit and eat, eat better than normal. We're usually running around all over the place working. Well, you've, had so, a, you've had a good beard trim since uh, the last time I saw you. Yeah, you've cut that yeah. back. I was clean shaven this morning. <laughs> you can grow the best beard I've ever seen, I have to say. Well, I think some other people might argue with that. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about yourself. I've known you for quite a few years now, but for people who don't know you, what you do, how you make a living, and uh, uh, a little bit about your history with photography and video. Yes, yeah, so um, trying to think how long ago it was now. I went back to um, study media originally when I was a bit older. I think I was about 22 at the time. Classic kind of not knowing what you want to do when you're 16 and leave school, thinking, oh, I'll just play football professionally, and that's absolutely fine. Uh, yeah, it turns out it wasn't the case so yeah after kind of working a couple of uh, normal jobs for a few years I thought I need to do something else studied video um, in my well it was media but it was essentially move, moving image so it was video um, studied that for a couple of years um, came out and then just basically did filmmaking for I don't know eight or ten years I'm still doing it now, just not to quite the same degree. Um, about six or seven years ago, the filmmaking had a bit of a shift from great, great big HDV shoulder cameras um, to little DSLRs. So I picked up a DSLR and just started taking pictures with it, really. And that was kind of how it, how it happened, how I became a photographer. And I currently work for Future, publishing, uh, writing, articles for digital camera magazine it's interesting how uh, that, that kind of journey where you've you've got you kind of started off in video or moving image and and, and went into photography that way rather than the other the, than the other way around because a lot of our members i know now who have been shooting dslr and obviously the technology now in dslr cameras is that you know that the 4k video that you can shoot is, is pretty incredible and even a lot of um people doing pro adverts or, or even the advertising agency who uh, in the same building as me, they use quite the DSLRs quite a lot for for video, and the qualities are just incredible, isn't it? Now, well, the quality is it, it, it is much better actually than what I was using at the time. I was using a, a HD, um, which was quite new at the time, Canon XL H1. It was called. It was a kind of banana shaped camera. Their their original one, uh, the X XH XL1 something was the same, but grey, and it was just SD at the time um one of the first kind of proper digital cameras and actually when i when i moved across to the dslr i thought this this is this is way better this is you know aesthetically just so much better yeah. um there were there's problems that come with shooting a dslr um you know things like getting sound into them and 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 not recording for certain amounts of time and this that and the other you know if you were sent as a freelancer to record an hours long, I don't know, presentation or something. You can't really rock up with your DSLR because you're cutting yeah. out all the time. Um, so there were there was a few limitations, but ultimately, if you're just shooting video, um, you can't really beat a DSLR or, or now a mirrorless camera. You know? Yeah, imagine. yeah. And and then obviously you 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 won a few awards with your photography, and and then I know it's what. How long have you been with Future now? Is it it's a couple of years? Is it or a year? No, ago? no, no. It's only recent. Um, I started just before Christmas. So I've been there maybe six months. Ah, I thought it was much longer because I must no. have seen you at the, it was at the Fuji event, wasn't it? The, the Fuji opening uh, in, in. Yeah, but that was, when was that? Was that this year or last I year? Think so. I think so. I was completely lost track of what day. Month I, I thought was. that was last year, like October, November, but I might, I might be wrong. I started there in November. So unless it was before Christmas, it was this year. Can't remember. No, I'm going to have to the, uh, That's how my brain's. A Charlie beer. <laughs> yeah. Right, so we're going to have a look at uh, one of uh, showreel videos just, uh, and then we'll talk through it. So we'll just watch it together.
So Alistair, that's, uh, that's fantastic, that's showreel. Thank you for, for uh, sharing that with us. Um, a few questions about it. Mm -hmm. Very cinematic at the start, very cinematic at the end, and then there's a kind of section in the middle where, like the college and the school, or, or yeah. maybe, was it a few, few different projects together? Yeah, what it was, I, I, I've just remembered why I made it, actually. I made it a couple of years ago now, um, maybe three years ago, and I was going for a videography job in a college um, at their media. It was kind of, I think, based in their media section, but just generally over the college. So there was all the shots there of the um, pupils and stuff. Yeah, really good. Basically, I needed to show that I'd done it before. Yeah. Um, yeah, kind of sandwiched with my more, you know, cinematic projects. Yeah. Um, yeah, that <laughs> that was why I made it. I actually just remembered. <laughs> and the right. uh, probably a couple of technical questions. And that that was shot on on the uh, video camera or DSLR. So that would all of that would have been on a DSLR. Um, I don't think I, I ever shot anything on a kind of old video camera now, which would eat, which would stand up visually at all to any of it oh. um, so that would all be I'm pretty sure 99% of that would have been my Canon 5D I was on at the time um, yeah Gimbal, so, gimbals and sliders and everything like that do you, do you, do you... didn't have a gimbal at that time I've only um, picked up a gimbal recently um, but yeah I was using a slider and a little kind of jib arm which is basically you know a long metal uh, I don't know what you want. To, it's an arm. Arm, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, which you know, you can you can stick on a tripod. You can stick the camera on the end of it, and you can go up and down and side to side and whatever. Yeah, it's a bit cumbersome. So you know, they're they're a bit. There are a lot to set up basically, and they always really need two of you. So we don't get it out that often. Um, which is why I've kind of got a gimbal now because you can do a, a very similar effect with a, a lot a lot less uh, equipment. Yeah. I was on a, um, just talking of gimbals and arms, I was on, um, I was working in the camera department for the BBC just at the end of last year for their new, their Pale Horse, I think it was called their, is that Agatha Christie? Yeah. Um, and I was employed, oh, do you know how to set up gimbals? And, uh, do you know how to set up jibs, jib arms? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay. Um, come, come to us at six. We just got a couple of shots to do, shouldn't take too long. Uh, it was a 30 foot um, jib arm on the most monstrous kind of trolley I'd ever seen. Um, four of us to set it all up. It took three and a half hours. Um, it was about half nine at night. Actor comes in. It was Rufus Saul, Saul I think it was. Uh, stands by a door. Action. Walks forward. Looks down the street. Cut. Put it all down. <laughs> so, but I think that the reason I wanted to say that is that video can be a lot of me like I call it messing around, a lot of setting up and a lot of hard work. Um, and I'm kind of really glad that I went from being a videographer to a photographer because it gets a lot easier. Whereas going the other way, I think it it can be a bit more difficult. But I guess you. you part of being a good videographer as well is first of all the creative side and secondly understanding like anything that we do in our industry photography or video is it's light isn't it uh, so you, you'll have brought your lights the skills your skills of lighting things from your video over to your photography as well yeah that's it I, I basically just kind of took a sidestep really um, and, and things became a bit a bit quicker and a, and a bit easier for me because it was it was pretty much the same um, I remember when I was first doing photography, I was using like lamps and stuff and thinking, well, this is what, you know, big kind of 650 watt video lamps that were horrible orange color. And I just thought, well, this is, this is exactly the same. And then somebody said, well, no, you can just use a flash now. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, okay. So we're going to uh, look at your three favorite images. Uh, they don't have to be images that are commercially valued to you, just things that have either had an impact on you personally or that you've just loved and, and keep you going back. And then towards the end of that, we'll um, we'll have a look at an image that's inspired you. So I'm just going to share the screen again, and we can hopefully both see, see them. If I get to the right one, here we go. And let me just... So the, the the first one here, Alistair, uh, very 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 interesting. And I, it's, is this one that won 
did you win an award with this at the SVPP? I seem to remember a few years. Yeah, ago. I did. It was so. This was I took this after I don't know, maybe within my first year or eighteen months of of doing photography. Um, it was a prop company. You can see kind of some of the props in the background there. There's a popcorn trolley, um, and they needed all their products photographed, um, which was what this was for. Um, and at the end, I'd kind of got to the point where on these shoots, most shoots I was doing, if they, you know, if there was an agenda, like I need, you know, 60 of these t-shirts shot or whatever, at the end, I'd always try and find time to kind of pull the model aside and say, like, let's just shoot, you know, let's just shoot some of our own stuff without, you know, clients saying, yeah. oh, I need this, I need that, you know, can you get this? Um, and that's kind of how this one came about, because you can't really see any of their stuff in it. Yeah. Um, and I remember when I first picked up a camera, I only had the body and just a 50 mil lens for about probably a good couple of years, I, I think. Um, so I bought, I remember borrowing a wider lens to do this shoot. This was a 17 to 40 and I just used it all day and I shot this portrait on it as well. You know, people say, oh, you must use an 80, you know, I, I don't really, just like what it doesn't really <laughs> matter to me what I'm using. Yeah. So I shot this portrait on it. It's quite wide and a bit of a funky kind of perspective, but it just all it just all came together. And like you said, I took it to the SWPP the first time I'd ever went. Um, a friend of mine encouraged me to go along, and I did. Um, and this one just so happened to kind of catch. And yeah, one won the kind of the sub portrait category I was in, the portrait category overall. Um, and then I think I actually came runner up in the entire competition with it. First year, there you go, amazing. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't I know whether that was friendly, such a I bet the friend who taught you to, to go in was uh, a bit gutted afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it's all been downhill since then, so. Oh, you peaked early then, did you? Yeah, that's it. Okay, brilliant. No, it's, re it's a really, really interesting show. And as a lot of your stuff is, um, it, it is kind of, I don't know the, the quite the modern correct term, uh, but kind of grungy or quite kind of um, yeah. still, isn't it? That, that's your, it is your style. Yeah, I think the, the, the cinematic thing totally transferred across. And when, I remember first, when I was first shooting images, and I would always shoot them landscape because that was what I was used to. You know, you don't watch a TV or a film portrait. Um, so I was not only shooting everything landscape, I was also cropping it. I was cropping everything to 16 by 9. Yeah, and, you know, a couple of people said, "Why, you know, why are you doing that?" And it just was because I was just so used to making videos. Yeah, yeah. really. Uh, and and, and you very kindly as well, which uh, nobody else has done. Uh, you're the first to do it. Has give us kind of the back behind the scenes picture as well. Uh, oops. Yes. So th th this. So is the... Yeah, there's the, there's the setup and there's the lights which I had at the time, um, which was just, just some really cheap lights. I remember they cost probably I don't know a couple hundred quid. Um, my parents bought them for me because I had no money at the time. And I said, I do think I need some. <laughs> so, I, so I got them. Um, this was one of the first times I'd used them. And this was, this was the first time I'd ever set up two lights. Um, so you can see them there on the left and the right. Yeah. But when I, I, I mean, I didn't really like it. Um, so when I shot that portrait um, of Gemma at the end there, I just, I killed one of the lights. I went back to just using one light, which is what I like to do. And that was the kind of end result, really. Yeah, brilliant. And, and, and as I say, it's really interesting to see the behind-the-scenes images as well. So this next, yeah. this this next series, Alistair, is uh, is you know, you, it, it really got a lot of uh, attention and a lot of traffic, didn't it? This. Yeah. It. Yeah. I mean. I mean. <laughs> yeah. That is the short answer. Um, so this was very recently. This was probably maybe a year ago. Not even a year ago. Um, I'm. You know, you're always changing your kind of um, genre that you're working in, or at least having a couple on the go at once, I think. I mean, I personally just get really bored, really bored of my own images, uh, my own kind of like editing style. So I'm always trying to, I don't know, move away from it or develop it. So the, this was this was obviously at a more recent time, like I said, and I'm just kind of shooting without without the worry of getting things right, without the worry of, I don't really do the competitions so much anymore. So some sometimes they can 
prohibit you from, I don't know, just not worrying and shooting yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, you could look at this and go, oh, maybe his shoes are too close to the bottom and it's a shame that coffee cup is a bit cropped. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it can, I don't know, I, I find it more of a hindrance. So I stopped worrying about it and just started shooting whatever. Yeah. Um, and and this was, was, this, was this kind of a project or was this you just out one day and you had your camera on your shoulder and, and you just saw it and shot it? Yeah, so I was just out. I always try to take my, my camera with me. Um, I just go out shooting images. It doesn't really matter what, ma mainly street stuff. Um, and I'd, I'd kind of, I was walking down the street from the left-hand side. Um, in fact, you've got the behind the scenes one there. It might be, yeah. might be um, a good time to show that. So I was walking... This was a completely different day. I was walking where that where that chap is holding the coffee cup now. I was kind of walking down, and Sean was sat in that um, alcove there to the right of the cafe, and his little hands were kind of just sticking out. Um, I could see the coffee cup and a cigarette and his boots, the toes of his boots, and I just kind of I looked at him and and just walked on by. Really, he didn't really he didn't really look up. He he didn't engage at all. Um, and you can kind of sense when people want to talk to you or, or not. Yeah. And it didn't really seem like he wanted to, or at least he, he seemed too shy to. Um, and then I just kind of looked back and he was still looking down the street. So I just walked back and asked him how he was doing and asked him if he wanted another drink. And he just said, no, I'm absolutely fine. And we just sat chatting for, I don't know, it's about 10 minutes, I think. And he was telling me his story. Um, he sort of said, I, I'm out on bail and, I, and I'm not from here, but I don't want to be where I'm from because I don't want to get involved in stuff again. So I've just kind of come here. Um, and then he started asking me about my camera. He said, oh, what, you know, what lens is that? Is that like a telephoto lens? I had my little 35 mil on at the time. Yeah. And I said, oh, no, it, you know, it, it's not. I don't really use zoom lenses for a few reasons. And I said, well, this, you know, this one's really great. Um, can I take your picture? And he said, yeah, you know, not, no problem. And I did and showed him and, and this was the, this is really just a, a, a byproduct of sitting and, and chatting to somebody. Yeah, you know, yeah. this is not, I don't know. This yeah, is, and it, was your intention to get an image of him or was your intention just to chat and uh, chat? No, to I, I just, there? no, I just chatted to him in the end. Um, you know, it led to a photo, sure. I will, I will more often than not just say to somebody, if I've chatted to them, can I take your picture? Sometimes they say no. Sometimes they say, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, that's just the way it is. Um, in the end, I donated this one to a charity and they sold it for quite, quite a few hundred pounds um, and, and man managed to raise some money for the shelter. So that was good. Um, and then later on was picked up by the UK, you know, photographic world cup team. And we, we stuck it in the documentary section. Yeah, I have to, I'll, I'll, it's, it's actually a very good segue. Um, that one of the things I haven't said is that you were on, our, with the, the, just to explain about the World Cup Challenge, it's, um, it's part of the FEP, the Federation of European Photographers. And as part of your membership to the British Institute of Professional Photography, uh, you, bec you automatically become a member of the Federation of European Photographers. And as part of that, then uh, we put a team together to compete against the rest of the world. And you were part of that team this year. And, um, and we did really well. We've, we've, we've done really well. And, and some of the images have, have, have scored very highly. And uh, I, th I think we were in the top 10 out of the whole world uh, with, you know, there was yourself, Sanjay, Chris Chambers. Uh, there's quite a few of our members. And, and we're, we're going to kind of uh, ramp it up again. Maybe, maybe, I'm not sure it'll happen this year, but certainly next year. And uh, I think it's just a great opportunity for us to, to compete uh, against other countries and, and, and you know, we, we kind of dropped off the radar worldwide as an organization and as photographers, but th this has kind of put us back on the map again and we're going to do even better next year. Yeah, it's just great when you see the kind of final ones come together, the different kind of styles and genres, but just people that are all in the UK, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Well, thank you for being part of the team as well. It really, it really is good. So that was your first two images, and, and uh, this uh, we've actually got two, uh, so three and four images. Yeah, you? well, we'll go on, we'll go on one more actually to the yeah. um, Matthew sat down. So this was the main the main one I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Um, 
So basically, um, the reason I kind of cho I've chosen these three images is just because they're the three, the three main areas that I'm working in, really, which is those kind of creative avant-garde style portraits, um, fashion and documentary. Yeah. Um, so I started off just shooting fashion, just shooting my friends or people from like modeling networks, usually just up against plain walls or brick walls or whatever in like cool outfits um, and a few portraits. And that's kind of, and that led on to me picking up um, basically enough work to just about get by. Yeah. Uh, I was shooting all sorts of stuff, usually, usually in kind of sustainable fashion uh lines i was working for click sergeant for quite a few years they made a clothing line where they were um basically making clothes out of duvets or curtains that people were donated to the shops you know they had a little team going around gathering all up making clothes and selling them so photographing all that um this is another sustainable fashion line this was a, a young girl called Alice Honeychurch and she was in her final year uh, doing a uni degree in fashion and this was her final major project so she she employed me to shoot it basically yeah. um, and this was on the Bath University campus and um, the reason I kind of wanted to include this one is because this is really what I I feel I kind of do best which is finding locations where someone's kind of said there's a wall and I just want a few shots and I like to try and over deliver so fight so no you know I, I've seen some bins around here if we move them out of the way and we can you know we can get something cool yeah um so that's that's this basically um typically if you went back to the photo of Charlotte um so that would be a typical shot that somebody has employed me to do and what they kind of want at the end of the day. And that is the main bulk of the job. Just something clear, yeah. clean, shows, shows the clothing, is kind of lit okay. You know, I'm not going to go to town on any of the editing because I've probably got to hand them like 100 photos and at least look, you know, look through 300. Um, but really always at the end of the shoot, like I say, I'll pull people aside and say, let's, do, let's shoot this, let's shoot that. Um, and that is how we kind of get to the more impressive images, I think. Yeah, yeah, very cool, very, very cool, and very, um, you know, f my 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 brother. I think I've mentioned this on other videos. My brother is a photographer for, for Boohoo, which is all kind of studio stuff, and it's very routine stuff. But they they have a team that go out and spend time in the States or California, and and this is the kind of stuff you can see from them as well. It's very at the height of kind of fashion and uh, of a, of a certain. Yeah, uh, edge group, isn't it? Yeah, and it's and it, you know, it's really hard to find to find the kind of time and the gaps in the schedule of the day to to pull away and shoot these images. Yeah, you know, often I've got sixty or seventy other outfits to to do, and they just want them all up against the same wall, so they look you know uniform on their website when they're selling them. Um, but I always try to do this if I can, and I think if anyone's just I don't know been employed to shoot. 60 t-shirts try and find a, a gap really where you can just slip away and shoot something that you want to shoot for yourself and kind of ultimately give them something something a bit better at the end yeah that's no, brilliant and uh, we've got one more image from you which um is a, an image that's inspired you and and it's this one yeah um so this is somebody who i discovered it's a weird one people always say you know who do you look at who who inspires you and, and to be honest I haven't really ever looked at much photography at all. Um, I remember when I was first doing photography, I actually actively didn't want to look because um, I didn't want to like copy or be yeah. too too kind of like influenced by something. Yeah. Um, but just lately, basically down to my role at uh, digital camera, um, I have to look at stuff. You know that that really is my job: is to create yeah. articles, to source in images, to interview photographers, to you know make projects. Um, so I remember one probably the first week I was there, there was a stack of books that we were reviewing, and and somebody just chucked chucked Joseph Kudelka's at me and said, "You're like this," um, and I looked through it, and of course it was it was all the, it was all the gypsy photos that he had taken um, across Europe. Um, I think probably mid to late sixties, this would have been, um, across Czechoslovakia and Romania and places like that. 
Um, and this is one of my favorite ones for that for so many reasons. Um, not only just the power of the kind of the people in it, um, just the fact that it, it's not quite right. You know, it's all slanted and all that stuff. And, yeah. and I'm all for that. And it just, it's kind of just reiterates the not worrying about stuff anymore. Yeah. And not saying, oh, well, the horizon is a bit wonky or, you know, I'm, I'm just really not worried. You know, if well, I was gonna... it's, it is such a powerful image, isn't it? It really is. This guy, is. This guy with, a, with a big vest is just staring right at you, isn't he? Yeah, it's the guy in the, in the base in the middle. This, yeah, that kind of is, is killing it for me. There's just so much um, kind of power in, in him, really. Yeah. You know, he just see, it, he feels like a very proud person. You know, and you're surrounded by, I don't know, it just feels quite happy. Yeah. Happy to me, you know, layers of people. And I just like the the, the, the kind of the tones in it. And I, and I just love black and white photography, really. All my work really is black and white now. I've shown you three color images, but um, the one of Sean, all of my documentary stuff I would um, have in color. It was just the one of him. I don't know what it was, whether it was his blue eyes or his kind of like, camo green trousers it yeah. just needed it just needed to be in color yeah 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 it was good well that's that's brilliant um fantastic stuff i, I as i say i really love your stuff so and and i'm really pleased that you've kind of with digital camera you, you you've kind of found the home there as well which uh, you seem to be enjoying and uh, i'm sure you're going to be involved with the photography show because obviously future run that as well and uh, yeah well, well I, I won't put you on the spot and see if it's going to happen in september but <laughs> I don't think anybody knows yet. I don't, I don't think anybody knows whenever anything is going to no. happen again. I mean, I haven't really, I haven't really got my, my hopes up for anything until after Christmas now. Yeah. 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 So was, uh, Everything's yeah. being cancelled. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a frightening time. Uh, so that's brilliant. Alistair Campbell. That's a uh, wonderful, uh, some images and I really, really enjoyed the video and, uh, I'm hoping that maybe we can get you a little bit more involved with, uh, doing stuff with us with video and, uh, maybe, Maybe some, yeah. some quick lessons online for a few people at some point. We'll do a bit, maybe do some training or something. But uh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, there's not. I would just encourage anybody who wants to shoot some video, just to stick their camera in video mode and just shoot some stuff, and then you'll work out quite quickly, you know, what what works and what doesn't. You know, there are certain settings I think you can use that that are kind of correct. Um, but I think it's just about shooting stuff, even if it's on your phone, just to see how stuff kind of fits together. Yeah. Because you're ultimately, um, you ultimately, when you're making a video, you're you're kind of trying to tell a story, even if there's no speech. I think what probably puts a few people off is then the editing. So and I know you know yeah. Final Cut Pro and things like that. They're quite complicated to to, to learn to use. But I mean, even just things like uh, I mean, I edit these these uh, small movies that or these videos that we do these interviews. I mean, in iMovie, it takes me five minutes to do them. You know, so there is bits of software out there that is quite easy to kind of get. Yeah, into. I used to um, I used to teach iMovie. I worked for about um, five years. I left last July, but I worked for about five years in a community media centre, and it was just about encouraging people to make stuff. Like I say, if you shoot it on your phone, and we can get it into the computer, you know, you can edit it. And we, I used to teach iMovie because it was the simplest way to just to just get an end result. Yeah. You know, and as soon if you take things a bit further and you and you feel a bit um, prohibited in iMovie because it won't let you do this or that, sure, maybe have a look at something else. But yeah. you know, what, what what would you be? This is the next step up. Do you think for iMovie? What next step up would be Final Cut. They're on, I think, what they call X now, which is ten. Yeah. Um, I remember learning on Final Cut six and then seven and then I don't know what happened to eight and nine. They just went to ten. Yeah. Um, so basically, that's the closest thing to iMovie. It's just a you've got a lot more options yeah. you know I, I don't think in iMovie you have your kind of like track and I don't think you can build others on top of that if I remember rightly or maybe you're limited to just two two yeah I think you can, right. I think you can put one extra track on and, 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 and a separate a second audio track but I think that's about yeah, it. yeah. but it but it's great you know in iMovie you can stick stuff together you can cut it down you can put music over it you can yeah. talk over it you can put text on it you know there's not a lot more to really need from that yeah. Um, so I was on Final Cut for ages, and if you're if you're an Apple user and used to something like iMovie, yeah, you know, and you and you can take the the plunge to buy something else, I'd probably buy that. 
you know, Adobe offer Premiere Pro as well, which are on at work. So I've that on my other computer. Um, but they all, they all, a bit like a car, they all do the same thing. It's just finding the, the button to make it all yeah. work. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, that's fantastic, Alistair. Again, thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And uh, we'll hopefully see you at um, the, the photography show whenever that yeah. happens. But very soon we go. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers now. Thanks. Bye.